Sorry, can I ask uh, just a quick factual question about some of the theories you were talking about? Um, the first thing is, you know, a lot of your criticism about journalists are well taken. Journalists are very ambitious, very careerist. But this plays into some of the material you had in your presentation about the BBC and the CNN um, allegedly having information about WTC7 coming down. I know from journalism that people are very um, eager to get scoops. They love to write books. They love to uh, make, make names for themselves. It seems like a great way to do that would be to take inside information about, hey, look, there's this plot to take down WTC7 from inside. Why aren't these people at BBC and CNN writing best-selling books and getting rich and getting their names out? The second question for you is, who was at the controls of Hany Hanjour's plane? Wasn't it just some other jihadi pilot who just had better skills than Hany Hanjour? Yeah, um, I could get into the whole issue of who was who was piloting that plane. I don't think it was another jihadi. But let me ask, answer in a different way. Um, you know, we always hear that, that journalists and, and uh, newspapers and so on want the scoop, but they don't always want the scoop. This is one of the biggest potential scoops in the last hundred years, and they don't want it. Now, I, I have a lot of friends in the media. I have one who's a very well-known uh, Canadian journalist whom I respect enormously, and she's written a whole lot of good stuff. I'm not going to give her name. She won't touch this. And I think there are two main reasons. One is that I think we all have filters as to what makes sense and what's worth pursuing and what isn't. And a lot of people apply their little common sense filters and they say this sounds nonsensical to me, I'm not going to invest my time in it. The other thing is that she knows it would be career suicide and she confirmed that to me. That she makes her living as a journalist, she has no separate income. Her house, her family, everything depends on it. And she would be dead in the water, she said, if she came out with this. So this is fairly serious stuff. The, uh, just before you go, the CNN and BBC thing, I don't think is meant to imply that those journalists were necessarily doing anything but their job and getting a scoop and maybe doing it early. But the whole idea that there is this foreknowledge of an event that even this says, up until the last seconds, they would never have predicted it. It's a, uh, a miracle type of event, but it happened. That's correct. I didn't mean to imply that they, those particular journalists were in on. But wouldn't it be a great scoop that someone told them? Could they go to the media and say, look, someone told me this in advance, and it was person X. Would that no, be a great scoop? Yeah. yeah. Uh, my sense, Jonathan, is that uh, you know, you're know you from the National Post. You. Uh, have more or less taken on the 9-11 story, maybe you've been assigned the 9-11 story. Um, my sense is that there's something going on in the National Post, that there's a, a realization that so many are uh, involved in this in one way or another, and it, it's part of the market, it's part of the diminishing market, you know, that, you know, there's no secret that the people are abandoning mainstream media uh, significantly. But I think you know you're in a position to know because you know you participated. You were pretty much the point person in a in a destruction of a, a, a public person in Winnipeg. Leslie Hughes was running for the Liberal Party, and uh, she uh, in 2002 wrote something about uh, a 9/11. You got uh, the news from this anonymous blogger called Black Rod, who's also written about me, so I'm kind of paying attention to this. And the idea that you get your source as an anonymous person who does, you know, professional assassination from the position of anonymity, so there's no accountability, and then you use that as a source, and then you were the point person between Black Rod, the Liberal Party of Canada, the Conservative Party of Canada, and essentially Leslie Hughes was a very mainstream person in Winnipeg, the host of the morning show for 10 years, uh, ends up being sm you know, smeared and completely uh, violated in the public square as an anti-Semite, uh, with the view that somehow her uh, views of 9-11 were motivated by some underlying hatred towards Jews collectively. And I, I think that was an outrage. And uh, the silence around it and the uh, fact that uh, nobody would say anything, nobody will say anything to, to this day. Then a couple of months later, 
You write a piece saying, well, by the way, I have to admit, I never did look at any facts around 9-11, and I really don't know anything about it, and I'm going to my family's gatherings, and my own relatives are saying 9-11 is an inside job. Meanwhile, you know, there's blood on the floor of people who have been, and you know, it's, it's, it's ongoing, it's not like this is over. Uh, so, um, you know, I was surrounded by a mob at the University of Winnipeg, brandishing a swastika and said, we saw your paper on the same site, Montreal 9-11 Truth, that has this swastika implying this is a Nazi site, implying somehow if you ask these questions, you're showing some sympathy with Nazism. You know, I mean, my father took a bullet uh, defending Canada against Nazis, and it was pretty objectionable to, to face this. And, 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 and uh, so the, uh, you know, yeah, tenure is one thing. I mean, there's all kinds of really serious, I mean, it's very serious in this society to, to be associated with anti-Semitism or Nazism. Those are really, really serious, you know, they, they put in question your relationships with people. Those are harsh things. And, you know, I, can you sit down with Leslie Hughes? Could you look her in the face and say, well, now that you're your, li your, your life and credibility is largely destroyed, and I did that, but I didn't really do my homework. And if you didn't do your homework on, on that, what other things do you write about where you don't just bother to do your homework, but just come up with a, a knee-jerk kind of uh, a promotion for aggressive war? And the 9-11 interpretation is the basis for aggressive warfare. Um, and, 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 and there's a propaganda, uh, propaganda cycle. Um, there's yellow journalism, uh, and you know the National Post is a big proponent of, of aggressive warfare in, 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 uh, based on this interpretation of 9-11. Now you say that uh, you're going to do a book on it and you're open-minded, but the first thing you, tell, you announce to the truthers is that uh, Noam Chomsky says, well, how could the U.S. government or people inside the system pull this off? They're so disorganized. You know, they can't achieve anything. How could they achieve such a goal? And yet, the implication is, but people in Afghanistan, in caves, uh, can somehow fi fi figure this out and do something that... Uh, so, 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 you know, to, to cite Chomsky, and we talk about it all the time, it's a source of great difficulty for us. Most of us, you know, appreciate what Chomsky's written, and most of what Chomsky's written goes against everything you write. And you know, you, if you if you're becoming a fan of Chomsky on this one issue, well, will we see uh, your admiration of Chomsky transforming your whole worldview? Uh, I mean, so so you pick this one thing from Chomsky. So so you know the, the propaganda element of this, the reality that during the Cold War there were thousands of journalists on the payroll of the CIA in in covert operations having to do with you know, destroying people through smear and disinformation, through propaganda, uh, because uh, maybe some indigenous person in Africa wanted to take over the resources here or there, like uh, Patris Lumumba, and set up instead a Mobutu, some kind. Uh, you know, th this was all uh, orchestrated uh, psychologically. Um, and the idea that the war on terror doesn't have this same kind of uh, of funding and backing and, and experts who advise on how to how to achieve these agendas and and, and, and you know the the, the 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 small number of professors like four how many in Canada I couldn't find anybody in Alberta a single prof to really talk about these issues like, you know what is it you know what a shame for the university where we have all of these protections and yet uh, you know I see my colleagues just will we'll not touch it that this. Why, why, why is that? Why is that? Here's another university prof. To, uh, just uh, quickly, uh, Jonathan, I, I try to encourage my students not to use uh, a priori reasoning, which is reasoning prior to the evidence. And the, the statement that you made about, you know, well, why wouldn't a journalist uh, follow this story is, is an example of that. Uh, there are many such examples that are often used against 9-11 uh, skepticism. You know, it, 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 Bill O'Reilly actually asked the same question on his show. Um, if this were true, then wouldn't every journalist in the world be, you know, trying to get the scoop? Um, but I try to encourage not to make the assumptions prior to the examination of the evidence. Yeah. 